say good morning. Yes, everybody's excited to see me. Hi, Bubby. Hi, Bubby. Yeah. Hi, guys. Hello. You're just showing off, aren't you? You're just showing off. The sun is shining. Beautiful day here in Alberta. This is Melanie with Littlefoot Farm. I'm just heading out to do chores. And these rotten too. They've been running away. So we've got them in the pen. So I'm trying to find a way that I can see you and not have that sun in my eyes. So yeah, I'm going to do chores this morning. Check on everybody. The kids have been doing chores the last few days. Because we've been doing a lot of work out in the field. Um, in the oil field not the farming field. Um, so yeah, here we go. Stay in. Stay in. Knock my water down. Oh, lots of kisses this morning. Hi. Hi. I don't see your dishes out there. Ugh. Hard to, oh, there they are. Looks like we need to run a cord for your water. That's okay. I think the kids were holding water for you, weren't they? Yeah. Hey, Rose. Rosie has a... Uh, perimeter collar on. We've got the radio um, system. Just wait, buddy. I'm going to try and stand you guys up here. So sorry for the, all the jostling. Just while I get their feed ready here, maybe you can see Rosie a little bit. Um, so yeah, so she's got the radio collar on. We have three of the base units. Um, two collars and we have ran into an issue with the collar where the dogs have chewed it so much that it is not usable anymore for the collar part. The electronic part of it works just fine. So we only have one dog with it on right now but it seems that Mama Rosie here likes to take Jasper out on adventures and then leave him at other people's houses. Why she does this, nobody knows. Yeah, I know. He is just too friendly, I think. And he gets, in reality, you should just leave other people's dogs outside, right? I know it's cold out and people get concerned about animals that are roaming. And I apologize for having a roaming dog. Hey, so yeah, so they're in the pen. Chickens are not outside. Oh, look at, see what the dogs did? I think they want to go on an adventure instead of being in the pen, which I is understandable. Completely understandable. So, a little frosty. Try and hold this. Oh, hi, Rocky. Here's Rocky. You've got lots of food. Your water is frozen, though, so we'll have to fix that. Hey, buddy, how are you feeling? He was fighting. The other rooster is our best guess. And he's injured his foot. I think they all want to get out. They've got lots of food left. Looks like they've been scratching enough that they put um, shavings in their feed bin. We might have to raise that up a bit now that the deep bedding is getting a little bit deeper. They're quite talkative. What's all the ruckus about? What's all the ruckus about? Okay. Oh, yeah. How's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? Oh, 
we are quite, quite active today. Oh, I see. Okay, you two. Stop. Get out. Rose, out. We got the dogs. Out. In here eating Rocky's food. Don't eat his food. That's his. All righty. Hmm. Well, that's just one of the things with farm life is the animals and their journey. Some journeys are longer than others. Oh, you guys. Hi. Hi, everybody. Okay, watch out. Yeah, that is quite low, isn't it? Is that? Almost looks like it got undone. <coughs> the water looks good. Looks like quite a few eggs. This will be probably my last gathering of eggs that's going to be going high tea into the incubator. And then we will hatch some of our barnyard mix under um, Brahma. So we've only got one rooster. He's a Brahma rooster. So I'm hoping, even though it's crossbreeding with my other heritage breed hens, that we should end up with some feathered feet and bigger bodied birds. You can see right behind she's solid black lady there with the feathered feet, Frankie. She is quite a bit bigger than the other hens. And same with Honey right here, the gold and black penciled hen. She is a Brahma and she stands quite a bit taller. And she is a thicker bird than the other barnyard mix in the leghorns. Um, yeah, so we're hoping to be able to transition away from Cornish Cross to a Brahma mix for a meat bird. They do take longer to grow out, but they're um, better at foraging. The heritage mix is really good at foraging and a good pasture chicken. We can pasture and we will be pasturing our Cornish Cross this year. We're going to order them in the next month. I posted a picture on our social media this morning showing the difference between our finished Cornish Cross versus a grocery store chicken, the whole chicken. The size alone just has me baffled. There's Excuse me. A lot more meat on it. It's a bigger bird. And we raise it ourselves. There is nothing better than eating food that you've grown on your own farm. Hey guys. And these are my ladies. My laying hens and my big rooster boy. Hi, honey. So yeah, that's where we are in our journey. We will be putting eggs in the incubator after school today, and we will make another video for that and show you guys how we set that up, how we check our eggs before we put them in the incubator. Hi. Hi, Red Hen. What are you doing, honey? And Frankie over here, our other Brahma hen. Hello. So our barnyard or our heritage breed chickens we ordered in the spring as chicks from 
Rochester hatcheries. Hi. And we've grown them out there, these black and gold ones. And our red hens, this red hen here, she came from there. And we are so happy with them. They grew really, really nicely. They're producing eggs very nicely. And here's our Brahma ladies right behind me. Hello, girls. Hello. I see you. I see you. And then we have our white hens. They are leghorn or leghorn cross. We've got our solid white one. Jeez, you're looking at me funny. Be nice. Our solid white one over here, she's a leghorn, purebred. We bought her and a couple others and a rooster um, from a, a local farm. And then they were mated by a rooster that we no longer have. He was a blue and silver wine dot. So that's why these girls have a little bit of black feathering or gray feathering in their white mix. And this one here, she has got the raspberry cone that the wine dots have. So it's more bubbly than the floppy white. Hi. <laughs> Everybody's just in a hot today. The floppy white comb that the leghorns usually have. Leghorns have, um, what? Um, I'm not sure what's going on with my earbuds. Hopefully you can still hear me. They lay big, like the extra large white eggs. And they lay a lot of eggs. So chickens have a set amount of eggs that they will lay in their lifetime. And that's what they will lay. And some chickens will lay more eggs than others. So if you want a high yield a lot of eggs. The leghorn is a great chicken for that. They're not really a dual purpose. They're not a meat bird. But the wine dots and the red rock cross are a dual purpose bird. And we also had, I'm, here I'm standing up again. And we butchered them already in our mixed chick order from Rochester. We received the black and white stripe. Um, what were they called? Rock. Something rock. I'll add it in my show notes there. I need to get more layer ration. I think that's why they're being kind of weird. They were a big meat bird, those roosters. Hi. Hi. I know, I know. You have stories to tell me, everybody. Okay, so let's see how we did for eggs. It looks like the top boxes are not as popular as the bottom boxes, and I think it's because of are you for that? Yes, you guys, you guys, you just okay. So yeah, the top ones you can see when I put the shavings in, it's kind of been disturbed minimally. Maybe this one. Um, but the ledge, I think, just isn't far enough away. Or the opening is too small. So I'm going to cut open the opening on these top ones. And so it's bigger like this, these bottom ones. One, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten eggs today, you guys. Good job, ladies. Good job. Okay, let's check the water. It's not frozen. Coming out. There you go. There you go. Yeah. There you go. See? Yeah, and we use this watering system to keep the moisture out of the coop. I don't want to put my water outside just because it, it gets so cold here in Alberta. So the water is inside, but it's sealed. 
there's no evaporation happening to cause frostbites or any damage to their comb and wattles. And they, it did not take them long to learn how to do this. One does it and they all just figure it out. And they click the little clicker and the water comes out. Everybody's got a story to tell today. You look like you've been in a few street fights. Yes, you do. <laughs> oh, so funny. So yeah, they're in and out today. It's fairly mild. And they are enjoying the fresh air and the safety of their coop. And with having the dogs out there, it does help keep predators away from the coop. So yeah, that's the chickens for today. If you have any questions about anything in, that I'm trying to explain, I know I'm just a crazy chicken lady. But if I don't know it, I will fit, figure it out or let you know I just don't know it. Um, yeah, or I can answer your question. If I can make a video about it and show you why we do certain things the way we do and yeah i hope this helps inspire you to try something new get outside of your comfort zone and grow food for yourself or your family see how good they are at foraging and just finding all the little crumbs that they've dropped hey guys i just came in to put on some warmer clothes pants again before I go down to the pig pen and it smells wonderful in here I put a chicken in the oven and I just want to show you how it's coming along there we go she is cooking there we go I put some frozen broth in there just to help it out look at that I'm going to slide it over for you it's hard to see through the glass. There we go. I love this roaster. It's Princess House. And it is beautiful. Look at that. Anyway, so once that's all done, show you guys the finished product. And let's head out to the pig pen. All right. I'm going to grab some food for the pigs. I've got some chickens. Not chicken. I keep saying chicken. Kitchen scraps. Um, some veggies for the pigs. Rosie's got her rawhide. Hey, girl. Do you like that rawhide? You do. Hey, bud. You say hi to the people. So I'm going to grab the 12 cups of pig food. Oh. That rawhide has got a dye or like a... Oh, my God. oh, it's in broth. I read that too. <laughs> it looks like somebody's bleeding out here. But no, it's it's the broth that was on the rawhide. So give them something to do, entertain them instead of destroying the place. And then uh, one dog will go out for a few hours and then we'll switch them out because they just run away. I don't know what to do. Besides, only have one dog. So. Anybody want to go to retrieve? <laughs> oh, I know it's funny, but really, you got to do something. I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to grab the feed for the pigs, and I'll take you down to the pig pen. Hey, guys, down at the pig pen here. Pigs are so excited to see me. The working lot, so kids have been doing chores. Now it's my turn to catch up with these guys. Hello. Hello, I missed you. I missed you. Yes. Are you licking me? Yeah. I miss you. Daisy and Porky. Oh, you're drooling, bud. You're drooling. Come on, let's go. Put you by on the fence over here. Sorry for the jostling again. Find it. Ow! Hey, just wait. Do I smell tasty? Do I smell tasty? Oh, 
Why is this not working for me? There we go. I'm trying to use the stand. Hey, come on. I just washed these pants. I just washed these with my coveralls. Oh, I see you've been exploring more. Come on. <laughs> come on. Come on. Come on. Where's your dish? Where's your other dish? Missing one. Missing a dish. Who's got it? Who's hiding it? Oh. <laughs> yes. I heard that. I heard that. You funny girl. Hey? Hey, where's your dish? Where's your dish? Huh? Huh? Where is it? Where is it? Where is the dish? Oh. Are you barking? Are you barking? Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> that was a funny sound. I don't think I've ever heard you make that sound. Sorry, like. Hey, are you nudging me? Are you nudging? Okay, come on. Watch out. Watch out. More water. Hey, just like a hot chocolate. Just like a hot chocolate. Are you nudging me again? Hey! That's the water part. Let's get the food part. Come on. Come on. Watch out. Hey. Don't nudge me. Ah, you're making a mess. Yeah, well, I'm just going to save this for a little while then. I don't like to put all of their food out at one time because they make a big mess and they fight over it. So I'll let them eat for a while. And then as they finish that up, I'll put some more in. It does take a bit longer to do that, yes. Uh, but who doesn't want to spend more time with their pig? I, I'm going to see... Well, they re-renovated their hay again in their hut. But I don't see the third dish in there. I think maybe they took it for a walk. Charlotte, settle down. Let's see over here, maybe. I will go for a little wander. Oh, da -da -da -da. It looks like they have been nudging around in the snow to find little bits of things to eat. They know what their body needs. So if they need a certain mineral, Mother Nature provides, right? So they will go and find it. Give some entertainment as well. well Anyway, I don't know what happened to that dish. Maybe it's underneath the hay in their pen. Because it's not out here anywhere. So I'll just use those two for now. You can't really see them at that angle, you guys. Sorry about that. Let's see. There we go. More jostling. Don't you just love it? There. Oh, somebody came for a drink of water. Hey, Porky. I'm going to drink of water. I'm just going to go back and fight for some food. So, yeah, I did have one dish for each pig. And it looks like one dish went for a walk. So, they will just share. Hi, Daisy. Hi, Daisy girl. Hi. She's not usually the one to come for cuddles, but she wanted to see me. I think she missed me just as much as I missed her. 
I love her little piggy face. Hi. 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 <laughs> He's like, do I want water or do I want pickles? They are so funny. So if you're new to our vlog, we are doing a 30-day homestead journey challenge where we try our best, which today is day 12, I believe, of documenting our homestead our daily chores, a little bit about all our animals and how we do things. And I am really surprised that we've made it this far. Honestly, we're not um, the type to be filmed and on camera and all that. I'm a photographer usually. I am on the other side of the camera. And so this is a journey outside of my comfort zone as well as our homestead journey. So this is our Cooney Cooney American Cro American Guinea Hog Cross Piglet. They are about six months old now. And yeah, we are loving them. We are. We started with chickens and grew to more chickens and more chickens. We've had turkeys. We've done broilers. We've hatched our own chicks. And now it's like, what can be our next challenge? Our next part of the puzzle to provide more food for our family right off of our own land. So these are pasture pigs. Right now it's winter, there's no pasture. So they are in a large pen with a run. And we feed them hog grower, cob, and they have access to alfalfa hay 24 seven. So if they want to forage their hut, is full of foraging foods. How about some fresh veggies, you guys? You like that? Which do you like best? Carrots. Ooh, Porky likes the carrots. Got celery, peppers, broccoli, carrots. Just some leftovers from the kitchen. They love it. Love, love, love. Right, Charlotte? You like this? <laughs> yes. Yes, I got you. Want some more? Want some more? There's the hog grower. It comes in pellet form. I'll come and show you. It looks a lot like uh, chicken ration. And yeah, and the cob that I mentioned has hey, hey. Settle down. Settle down. Um, what is it called? Corn, oats, barley with a bit of molasses. Oh, I should show you a handful of that. And yeah, so it's just a little bit of supplemental nourishment. It's high in calories to give it to the chickens and the pigs. Um, it helps them stay warm in the winter because they're they've got that high caloric intake. When our temperature in Alberta ranges anywhere between minus forty to plus forty in the, in the year, okay. Oh, Daisy, there's some more. There's some more. You girls can share. You can share. Charlotte has black fur with brown, almost like brown tips, or black and brown. No, it goes from black to brown, a lot of her hair. Daisy is all black. And Porky's are black. Pig with the white socks. And he's got a white mark on his face. He's our boro, or baro, however you want to pronounce it. He's our castrated male. Our boar, if we uh, get one and separate them so that we can choose when they breed. Our two females can be bred. So looking for a ginger boar. And then we can start having piglets for our own family and pasture pork. So on today, 
And yeah, if you have any questions about what we do, why we do it, how we do it, drop them in the comments. Either here on YouTube or on Facebook, in Messenger, on Instagram, wherever you are on the internet world, wherever you are in real life. I hope our vlog and our blog both inspire you to try something new, whether grow something, go visit a farm if you live in the city, and support your local farmers, and eat off the land. Stop eating from the factories. Anyways, cheers, and uh, yeah, Melanie from Littlefoot Farm. I don't know if I'm in the camera all the time, so here we go. Have a great day.